Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're doing this. Welcome to uh, lesson G on plant defences for this topic. Your starter is one that's been a few times and will be over the next couple of lessons is another quick quiz. Um, what I'll do at the end of each slide is I'll say to pause it. Um, so you just need to click pause on your video uh, and then carry on. Otherwise, you're just going to have a lot of me just sitting around doing nothing drinking a can of coke um, so give yourself about six minutes answer as many questions as you can and then unpause it for the answers so the answer to question one which two parts are found in all viruses it is the capsid or the protein coat whichever you call it and the genetic material inside if you put uh, dna or rna that's fine what can be found inside all viruses bacteria plant cells and animal cells it is of course their genetic material um, the one thing that some of you might have tried to put is cytoplasm, but unfortunately that doesn't cover viruses, just the other three. So in order of size, going from largest to smallest, we should have the animal cell, then the bacterium, and then virus. Uh, one example of virus, there's lots of examples, uh, but HIV, flu, measles, Ebola, uh, well, corona now, I guess, would be good. Which do viruses need to infect cells? Why? So they can make copies of themselves. Uh, some viruses have two pathways in their life cycle. Uh, in which of the pathways is the genetic material inserted into the cell's genetic material? That is the lysogenic pathway, the one that repeats. Um, in which pathway are cells damaged or destroyed as new viruses leave them? It is the lictic pathway or lictic pathway. What is the formula for calculating the cross-sectional area? From maths, it's pi r squared. In which outer layer of leaves and stem cells or stems can help the pathogens keep out of the plant tissue it is the cuticle you could also put the epidermis for that and name one medicine used to treat human illnesses that's been developed from a substance taken from plants what we studied two last lesson so you have aspirin uh, or art artemisin um, but you could also have morphine which comes from the poppy plant when you're ready you've marked your answers etc etc please move on to the next slide so the next one plant defenses these are your learning objectives if you want to make a note of them please feel free to do so uh, pause it and then unpause when you're ready to move on right your keywords for today's lessons so there will be some new words here for you uh, autoclave you may or may not have heard of um, cuticle we have previously covered uh, aseptic techniques you may or may not uh, know already um, but what i'd like you to do uh, as you have with all these lessons, I hope, is make a note uh, of these keywords and their definitions. They don't have to be word for word, um, but they do need to be into your books, please. When you're ready, uh, unpause it and move on to the next slide. So, plant defences. Uh, onto your mini whiteboards or your books or scrap bit of paper or wherever. Um, could you please... Uh, just mind map or come up with any ideas of how plants protect themselves against pests and pathogens. Um, we've previously talked about some of these bits, kind of odds and ends here and there, nothing explicitly, um, but we'll go through some answers in just a bit. So pause it to have a think and then unpause it to move on. So if you can, there's a YouTube video which you'll be able to access, uh, so please click through to that from the PowerPoint, not from this video, um, which will give you uh, a couple of extra bits of information. But you can see there we've got four pictures with four different physical barriers. Um, these are some of the ones. What I'd like you guys to do is please get this down into your books. We will be adding more definition to this later on. Um, none of these are perfect solutions to the problem um, but what they do is they slow down the speed at which pathogens start or pests uh, kind of start to get into the plant and it gives a chance to ch uh, gives the plant a chance to fight off the infection give it enough time to uh to be able to fight off the infection or the pathogen or the pest or whatever so the first one uh we have got the waxy cuticle so this acts as waterproofing but also does prevent pathogens from entering through the cell walls uh, we have leaf hairs which again act as a similar thing these also put off uh, any might be predators that are eating the plants same with thorns and prickles uh, and d acts for lots of things the thick layer of bark will prevent pathogens entering through it and also prevent pests from eating it when you're ready unpause it
So what happens when these physical barriers get breached? Um, there's a lovely picture of a potato there, and believe it or not, it does serve a purpose. Um, but what can a plant do if it can't physically protect itself? So if a, uh, a pathogen can get through one of those defences, if it's quick to get through, um, or if a pest is able to get past any of those defences, what can a plant do to then further protect itself? Um, when Have a little think about that when you're ready. Unpause the video and move on. It is of course chemicals. Plants use chemical warfare, have been doing for years. Incredibly effective um, and incredibly useful. We'll be talking about some of these in just a second. So most common one or the most uh, talked about example is ones that come from potatoes. So the wild potato will release a poisonous sub or substance into the air um, which will prevent the aphids from uh, eating it. It basically scares them um, and so they'll actually fly away from the potato when they start eating it because they believe they're under attack. Um, you may have seen on the previous slide foxgloves are continuously poisonous um, and so that does help prevent animals from eating them albeit they only eat them once and then they don't really last much longer after that. So a couple of questions here for you to have a look at. Um, please give yourselves about five minutes or so um, to work through the three questions on the left into your books. If you finish, have a go at the extension question at the bottom. But can you please pause the slide when you start the questions, unpause it when you're ready, and we can move on. So the answers from the previous questions. Uh, I'll leave these up on here. Again, pause it so that you can read through the answers and make any corrections you need to make. Uh, and when you're ready, unpause it to carry on. So we've covered several physical barriers, a couple of chemical barriers. What I'd like you to please do is put everything we've discussed so far into this table. So into your books, can you please copy and complete this table? and add into it the physical barriers we've discussed so far, as well as the chemical ones. Uh, if you want to do this on your own first, feel free to do so. Just pause the video uh, after I finish this little bit, um, or just wait and we'll go through the answers together. Okay, so the answers we have the waxy cuticle, thorn spikes, hairs and bark are all the physical barriers. Remember, they act to slow not necessarily stop. Um, and then the chemical ones on the other side, now they might be deterrent. If you're looking at things like the nettles that inject poisons, uh, it might be the uh, poisons or toxins um, act to repel as well, which would be things like the potatoes, um, or they might just be straight up poisonous like the foxgloves. Uh, the physical ones are a little bit more straightforward, but the chemical ones uh, are less so. So pause the video and when you're ready, unpause to move on. So what do all of these have in common? Aspirin, digitalis, artesimicin uh, and camomile lotion. What do they all have in common? Well done, you're correct. They are all active ingredients and they all originally come from plants. So your research task, a couple ways of doing this. If you want to uh, go away and research this on your own, and please feel free to do so, use these bullet point questions to help you. Uh, pick any medicine or plant from the next slide and use these questions to answer it. Or if you uh, aren't going to do that, if you don't have access to the internet, or if you uh, simply are too lazy, which I hope none of you are, uh, then I've got some information slides for two of the medicines coming up. So these are your plants and medicines. I'll let you pick one or none or whatever. Um, and then you can start your research. If you are using the next two slides, uh, then all you'll need to do is pause it while you're on those slides to gain the information or just use the PowerPoint that's been given to you. So the first one, aspirin. Uh, the arrows here just show uh, logical ideas, not necessarily processes. So pause it if you need to make any notes from this page. And the next one. So 
So, describe for two ways uh, substances are used from plant to medically. Well, we've discussed both these methods, or at least you should have seen them on the previous two slides. Um, they will either treat symptoms like pain or fever. So, these two points carry on from our previous lesson when we talked about bacterial lawns. Um, what does contaminated mean? And what does aseptic mean? These are two opposing concepts. You may already know, you may not, but the answers are coming up in just a second. So aseptic means free from contamination. Contamination is, of course, when something is present that should not be there. So testing new medicines. This is a nice big heading into your books, please. Um, there are several phases which we're going to talk about. Um, and we're going to talk about how you might develop a new medicine from plant material or from any other place for that matter. Um, and it will also form the backbone of our next core practical. So during development of new medicines, they must be tested on cultures first. The reason we test on cultures first, as we'll discuss in the next couple of slides, is simply for safety more than anything else. But importantly, they must not become contaminated. If you contaminate your results, they become worthless. So in order to do that, we develop something as scientists called the aseptic techniques. And two examples are, oops, sorry, hmm, wrong slide. Oh, well, you can carry on with this. Um, so in order to test, we use bacterial lawns. Um, most lab medicines do get developed in labs, blah, 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 blah. Um, aseptic techniques, as I said before, are used, and this is what they are used, and this is how they are used on the next slide. My mistake, sorry. So we have the inoculation loop and the autoclave. Uh, so the autoclave is an extremely hot and high pressured uh, oven, basically, that will sterilize equipment and produce clean samples or clean materials. Or you have something called an inoculation loop. Um, these are a metal piece of wire which when they are heated to glowing you know that they've destroyed all bacteria and all pathogens on them making them free from any contaminants. Both of these are used with a growth medium um, and that is designed to support as you can see down there the growth of bacteria. Please do pause the video in just a second to make notes and unpause it when you're ready. So if you could read through the practical method, which is on the next slide, you'll need to pause the video for that um, and have a think about this question number two and then use everything you've learned to answer the worksheet questions. How do you decide looking at the results? Which plant extract would have been the most effective A or B from the diagram there? And so when you're ready, move on to the next. I'll move on to the next slide and you can read through the method and answer those questions. So read through, underline all those aseptic techniques you can see, ones that involve preventing contamination. Make a brief note of that into your books, please. And when you've done that, you can carry on with the worksheet. So pause the video and unpause it to continue. And your final question for today's lesson, um, which is explain why cultures of bacteria in a petri dish and vials must be kept covered. There are two marks available, so uh, it's an explain, which means you want to be including the word because somewhere in your answer. Make a note of that. Please do write it into your books, the answer to this question. Pause it while you're doing that and pause to get the answer. So your answer, there are many kinds of microorganism in the air. That is your first answer. If you do not cover properly, it might contaminate your experiment. Very, very straightforward answer. I hope you did all right. Um, well done today. We will be looking at the development of medicines, uh, I think, next lesson. Please don't hold me to that. Um, but well done today. I'm sure you did very well. And I'll see you when I see you.